But you must be reminded that all, all that it took for Jesus to get to earth. See, that's what Advent does, Reverend Pitts. It reminds me of what it took for Jesus to get here. From having the angel of the Lord convince both Jesus' earthly mother and father that he was to be born and not tossed away. To having escaped the wrath of the king who ordered all newborn and infant baby boys to be killed, Jesus was targeted for death before Jesus ever got here. Wow. See, this reminds me why, Brother Roundtree, why we must be diligent in rearing our young men because society, this world therein, has targeted our young men for death before they are even born. <laughs> Don't believe me? Just watch. See, I know it's in, we're in 2013 and we got a a black president, uh, and some of y'all have got comfortable, uh, but there are many things uh, that have not changed uh, when it comes to the plight uh, and the struggle of black males in America. Uh, see, while you're being sidetracked and entertained uh, by fictitious reality shows, uh, our brothers are being dismissed uh, as being intellectually inferior. Uh, see, as you shop for Christmas gifts uh, for folk who don't even like you uh, with money that you don't even have, uh, the intellectual gifts of our young men uh, are being ignored in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. This is a sin and a shame, Asbury, huh? that our young people are, are not even taught black history huh? during February, huh? let alone the rest of the year. Huh? Our children should know huh? who Martin the King is, uh, who Marcus Garvey is, uh, who Malcolm X is, uh, who Madam C.J. Walker is. Uh, the only people they know is Michael Jordan and Oprah Winfrey. Huh? They should know more huh? than what's on TV. Huh? They should open a book huh? and be reminded of who their history really is. Uh, the truth is, beloved, uh, the world doesn't have a spot for them in the classroom uh, because they got a spot waiting for them in the jail cell. <laughs> Oh, and so, my Asbury family, Jesus was speaking, and as he was speaking, he had to change the norm in the room. That's what we call the new Asbury, to change the norm in the room. He had to change their minds about his arrival to earth. He needed them to focus not merely on his entrance here, but to their response to his entrance. Now, in the meat of the matter, I'm about through. In verses 37 through 39, as a response to the disciples wanting to know when Jesus will return, Jesus gives them the example of the times of Noah when people had no morals and lived careless lifestyles. The text explains as very how in the days of Noah, when the flood hit the earth, people were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving in to marriage, and they did not know the flood hit until the flood actually hit. Okay, please understand, when the text talks about eating and drinking and marrying, that's not a sin. And we preach to the super deep Christians, the super spiritual folk who think marrying and eating is a sin and you're going to hell just because you got a spouse. Let me help you out. Don't get so super spiritual that you miss the message from God. The sin in the text, watch this, the sin in the text is operating without God in these activities of your life. God should be in everything that you do. Right. God needs to be present in your celebrations yeah. and in your tragedies. Yeah. God needs to be present in your marriages and in your conversations. Yeah. God needs to be present. Watch this, y'all. When the Newport Committee meets in the parking lot and when the church celebrates on Sunday morning. Yeah. God needs to be present in your families. Because if God is not in it, then you have nothing at all. Right. Did you ask God, ask Mary, to be with you in the classroom? Did you ask God to go before you before you went to the doctor's visit? Did you ask God to guide the doctor's hands in the operation? Did you ask God to protect your work performance and your integrity? Did you ask God to remove ungodly thoughts from your mind? Did you ask God to have you full reign in your life? Do you want God to be the full reign God in your life? Or do you want to have weekend visits like a deadbeat parent? Did you ask God to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and be the God of you as well? Did you ask God to do it or are you simply going through the motions of being a Christian? In the scripture has there, God's people became comfortable and in getting comfortable, watch this y'all, they blocked out God. 
They ate so much turkey and so much stuff. They had a good time on Thursday. They forgot about church on Sunday. They got comfortable. And that's why Jesus had this conversation. Simply put, beloved, Jesus arrived, watch this, at the even now moment to ensure God's presence will be there in our everyday lives. Because you got comfortable after getting blessed, you forgot where the church was. Because after you got booed up during the wintertime, you didn't pray as much in the springtime. Because it only took a few answered prayers, a couple of paychecks, and a few memorable weekends for you to get spiritual amnesia. That God had to remind you of who blessed you in the first place. You got comfortable and you blocked out God from your life. Here's a thesis of the message I'm about through. People of God, we should constantly be spiritually alert as we prepare for the return of Christ in our lives. Yes. The scripture doesn't teach us to ignore the problems in our lives or in our society or become naive to them. Rather, we must be ready at all times. Tell you, be ready, be ready. Be ready. Verse 42 says it clearly, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour of your Lord is coming. Let me shock you right here, Asbury. Nowhere in the text did it say Jesus is, Jesus is coming because of the devil. Did I mess up half the room already? <laughs> Satan was not a factor in this text. We try to blame so much on the devil, and the devil is nowhere around. Mm -hmm. It was the love of Jesus that he had for us that moved our Savior from a seat of comfort in heaven to a seat of scrutiny here on earth. Just so that we can have eternal life. He created Asbury the even now moment just because he loved us so much. Do we deserve it? No. But he loved us anyway. Here's your blessing for the day and I'll see y'all next time. For us to get to this point, Asbury, the last Holy Communion service of 2013. It shows we are continually moving forward uh, in a state of readiness, uh, knowing something major is still on God's agenda for us. Uh, you want to know why? Uh, we come all the way from West Baltimore uh, out to Asbury two or three times a week. Uh, because I know God got something special uh, waiting for us. Uh, you want to know why Sister Sidonia is so diligent with the work of the church? Uh, it's because she knows uh, God got something special uh, waiting for her. You want to know why, uh, Brother? Gwen does what he does uh, for Asbury and God's people uh, it's because he knows God got something special uh, yeah. with his name on it. Uh, you want to know why uh, Sister Vanessa Pika uh, acts the way she does uh, toward the youth and young adults of this church. Uh, she ain't doing it for recognition y'all uh, but she know God got a blessing uh, with her name on it. Uh, some of y'all need to understand this morning. Uh, we don't do what we do uh, so that Dr. Laura Easton can say good job. Uh, we don't do what we do uh, so that Pastor can say something nice about us. Uh, we don't do what we do, y'all, uh, so that Bishop Marcus Matthews can write a nice letter the conference. Uh, but we do what we do uh, so we can hear those wonderful words. Uh, well done, uh, thy good uh, and faithful servant. Uh, can I put you in the earth here? Uh, I know for myself, man, uh, God got something special who uh, waits for me. Uh, God got a blessing uh, with my name on it. Uh, so I don't care how much you went through, uh, but in 2013. Huh? You ain't got to wait for 2014 for your blessing. Huh? You better get ready for it huh? right now. Huh? God has heard your cry. Huh? God has seen your tears. Huh? God knows your pain. Huh? Just don't give up huh? right where you are. Huh? Cause there is something huh? waiting for you huh? when you get through this. Huh? That's your word this morning. Huh? Please don't forget that. Huh? Pastor ain't saying huh? if you get through it. Huh? The pastor said huh? when you when you get through your heartache, when you get through your pain, when you get through your furlough, God got something special with no name on it. Don't you know this scripture was not formed to scare you and to believe in Jesus, but it's here to put in your spirit a state of constant readiness. You gotta be ready when Jesus comes. The text simply wants you to be ready 